What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. We are here for a bat number three with hitting guru David Dahl. And, and why this at bat? We talked a little bit before about a Kenley Jansen homer, a Walker Bueller homer. Now, why this at bat? This is one of my favorites just because I'm 0-2 facing a guy throwing hard again. And I was, I was in a good spot with my swing. Um, and I, to be honest, I crushed it and I, I felt good about it. Like I, I dropped the bat. I had a little flag with it. So it's one and it went, I thought, I personally thought when I hit it, it was going to go third deck. And then I remembered, okay, I'm not cargo. I don't have that kind of juice. It went like <laughs> middle of the second deck, but you know, it was, it was one, of, this is one of my favorites just because it was a, it was just a really good swing and one thing I'll say is, you know, we saw the Walker Bueller one and kind of you'll notice my stance or setup might be a little different here. And reason being is because we made those adjustments at the beginning of the season and they were working pretty well for a while. But one thing I, I was striking out a lot and I, you know, I caught that ball up, but a lot of times I was missing them and at my hands, you know, I wanted them low, but as the season kept going, they just kept dropping lower and lower without even really like without even really noticing, you just kind of, you get tired, you get fatigued. So you're just doing stuff that you don't even really realize sometimes. And I ended up, I was starting to crunch a little too much when I was loading. So I was really getting susceptible to that fastball up again and uh, talking to the hitting coaches, uh, talking to my dad, you know, my hitting guy, Trent, um, just talking to him about everything. And I was like, um, we go to we went to Boston and that's where I started. We had a two game series facing Chris Sale and and then uh, uh I think Rodriguez what's the other lefty um yeah Rodriguez Rodriguez yeah Rodriguez and they dice they dice me up their bullpen dice me up I, I think I was over five I think I was probably over eight over nine bunch of strikeouts um high fastballs curveballs couldn't see them then we went to Philly had to face Nola he punched my. <laughs> few times tough ab's um, Front door sinkers and then we went to pittsburgh face archer he dominated me and so i was like okay i need to step back a little bit i actually bud gave me the next day off after archer so i was like okay went back and started watching a lot of video from 16 18 and then some video from in season and then you know videos when i was getting out and I just thought, you know, I was starting, hands were getting too low, starting to crunch too much. And I, I felt like, okay, I'm going to go back to knowing what I know now with how to properly load, how to do the right things. I'm going to go back to more of a higher setup, raise my hands up a little bit more and kind of just, and still load and do everything the same, but just try to be a little taller and have, have my hands a little higher. And that's in May, I made that adjustment, played the next day two hits and then from there I just like really took off and that's where you know that adjustment I think is why what helped me make the make the all-star team because when I made that adjustment is when I really started started having a lot of success I love it but I, I felt like I needed to do the stuff at the beginning of the season to get the feel of you know getting more relaxed in the upper body taking all the tension and stress out of the shoulders and and it, it helped me you know, I feel like the process, it's the process. So I feel like it helps me lead, get, get here. I love that, you know, during an all-star season that you're searching and willing to make adjustments because a lot of times, you know, you're going well, you hit a little rough patch. It's like, do I need to make an adjustment here? Do I want to, or is it just like one of those things? I'm just going through a little rough patch. Do I stay the course? And I think the answer is it depends well, for me, it was, I was striking out at like 35% of the time. And that's just way too much for me. Like I was, I was getting hits. I was still hitting around. I think when I made this adjustment, I was like 288, 290. So I was still up there. I had just dropped below 300, but it was still like, I was relying on a lot of good luck, kind of a lot of like batting average balls of play stuff was just falling for me all the time. And I was, I mean, I was striking out like 30 plus percent and that okay. for me that was just that was i was embarrassed about it so i was like i need to figure out a way to cut that down and when i made this adjustment i cut it down a lot like i think from that point forward if you look at my numbers like i think my strikeout percentage was like 21 22 percent so it, it helped me out a lot we're gonna have our guy kyle who edits our videos here he's probably gonna put up beginning of the year and then this is yeah. there something to be said about when you were crouching 
and being a little more hinged, do you think it had an effect on you seeing the ball, like a little more head movement? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, you know, I was, I'd start a little up and then I'd go a little bit down. So just that extra head movement might have might have caused me to not pick up some things as, as quickly. And, and uh, you know, when I, when I went back, I felt like my head movement was very, very minimal. And that's, I feel like the best players in the game, they don't have a lot of head movement. Well, at least up and down. I struggle with that a lot. You know, you can kind of go forward with it. Go forward, but like when you're going, when you're starting here and you're going here, like the ball, the ball's moving a lot on you. I think that's the biggest thing that I, t- I would tell young players, like young, you know, high school kids, whatever. It's really focus on what your head's doing. Yeah. Because you can do everything right, but if you're not seeing the ball, yeah, you ain't gonna that's hit it. it, man. <laughs> and uh, we used to. <laughs> I'm going to get off track here a little bit. We used to have this thing. This is way back in the day. And, and Joe Maurer is a guy, obviously, who you know I played with. And people cherish him in the Minnesota Twins organization for good reason. And they would show his head. And his head doesn't move at all. And, I, and I'm like, man, like I wish I could do that. I can't. It's because it's not who I am as a hitter. But you always kind of strive for that. He, he, like you said, all these good hitters, I really – believe that the base of that is the lack of head movement up and down because they're just seeing the ball better if they move it's like forward but they stay on like kind of the same line and if like i love watching juan soto hit that dude that dude's unbelievable like he doesn't not a lot of movement a lot it's just i, I love watching him hit <laughs> okay all right let's get into this a bit uh we got a young guy spores who throws cheese which is yeah. the norm the norm usual spin rate top of the zone heaters and yeah, so he, I remember he got two heaters by me, kind of up and in, and you know. Well, he, don't be spoiling it, man. Oh, true. Okay. <laughs> All right, oh, let's see this first pitch. So, <laughs> six one. You know, kind of a low uh, stress at bat here. And it was one of those things too. The Dodgers were beating us pretty bad all, all, a good bit at that point in the season. So we we're, I think this was the game we finally. It might have been like our first win against them, or first time we were really up on them. All like they, they had our number most of the year. So it was, it was nice to have have a game like this. It got us going a little bit. Is this post All Star? Yeah, this is post All Star. Okay, so, so this, this is was, swaggy, this right, swaggy D. This was actually right end of july right before i like i think this was the game before i ended up getting hurt and missing the rest of the year so this was the reason i love this homer too because it was the last homer that i hit <laughs> i watch a lot just because you know it's okay. the most, most recent one you got the elbow guard on yeah i actually i used to wear tape. Uh, i wore the evo shield got hit by uh chad green in the forearm like 97 right in the forearm so i went i went with this this thing Love it. I love the, these unis too. I, I think these are probably. I like, black, I like the black jerseys, the cut off sleeves. All right, here we go. First pitch here. So I never faced him before either. I didn't know much about him. Got up in there. Little cut on little it too. Little cut, yeah. Little cut there. And when you, when you when you your first time facing a guy, obviously you see video on him and you have the scouting report. I was gonna say, like, is it important for you to see one? Clearly, it's not. You're out there hacking. Yeah, I'm trying to get trying to get the knock. Uh, I don't like taking first pitch fastballs in the middle, but obviously that one ran. I probably would have been better off to take it. But yeah, I'm 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 a naturally aggressive hitter, and like I said, it's one thing I'm working on trying to be a little more selective and not not chase as much. But so that one cut a little bit. Yeah. So now, are, are you thinking? Okay, now I got it set my sights maybe to right center here yeah. as opposed to left center i am thinking all right i need to probably I need to shorten up need to get the foot down a little earlier and it seems like his ball's kind of taken off to playing a little harder than what he's throwing right there so um, i am i'm like all right i'm thinking more to the right of center not not for sure right center but um i ended up adjusting after this pitch to right center <laughs> all right here we go Oh, one! You're like, man, that was kind of a that was kind of a fastball with some cut on it. I think. uh, Here Here we go, go. setting up same spot. Spot (sighs) by me. Mm. Now see that pitch again. Now I'm like, okay, I need to think right center and get the head. (laughs) Yeah, he gasses this one up, man. He threw this one. (laughs) I was like, he's really got some. 
like a he funk. pulls that glove down, so you little funk, right? Yeah. So after this, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely, I'm literally, I'm gonna feel like I'm just putting my foot down and just gonna try to wait on it, and I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to take this to right center now. And um, O2, and he went, he goes back to the same exact spot, but he misses down just a tick, and. I think it was a young pitcher, young a younger catcher, so they saw that it was working, so they went back up there. So I was just like, I kind of had a feeling they were going to try to go back if it's working. If it's if they broke, don't fix it kind of thing. So I just I felt like he was going back up there. If he throws me like a back foot slider or something, I'm, I'm looking like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, he, I kind of – I'd be on the same page as you here. Like 0-2, um, not a great swing, yeah. O-O. Then good swing, but he gasses you up. Oh, one to get to oh two. Yeah. I think if I'm up there, I'm like, okay, he's at least gonna go one more time there. I I said too. I'm not gonna get beat by the same pitch three straight times. Like I'm I have to make an adjustment. I'm choked up. I'm like I'm doing whatever I can not to get beat by that pitch again. All right. Well, here we go. Where's he gonna set up? See, he wants he wants it there again. Yeah. He's like, you know what? Let's try to beat this guy. So we'll see him set up. You're trying to pull this ball now. I see you yeah. choking up. Oh, no. Oh, that, that good. And that one, like, I had some I had some swag with that. Like, I dropped the bat, put the head down. Like, I, I felt good about it. <laughs> oh, I missed it. But, yeah. I mean, he, you, if you watch the uh, – what is that called? K-Zone where they show the balls. Yeah. Like, he's just clustering that. Yeah. Up, up and in quadrant right at the top let's watch it again just watch this this is this is post all-star right here yeah this is swaggy d feeling good about myself a oh, thing i do too like a lot of my homers i go back and i've watched a lot of my homers i am choked up a lot of times like and i didn't notice that until i went back and looked but i choke up a lot even early in the count first pitch kind of i just feel like when I'm choked up, I have more barrel control and I don't chase as much for some reason. Like I just, I don't know. It just, it's weird. I, I like choking up for some reason. I, I just, <laughs> something I do. Yeah. I, I, you know, I agree with that. And that's kind of my argument against like these, get your a swing off. Like, you know, a lot of times when you're just trying to have a good swing and, and catch the ball at the right point of contact, like you yeah. don't need an a swing to hit a homer. You yeah, know, you just, you just need to barrel it. However, you need a you good bat path and to, and to put on the barrel. Yeah. And you're gonna see here. I love the slow mo. It's my favorite thing. Oh my! Look at this. Let's go back and look at that. How clean your path is, man. Through that ball. Right there, you're like, huh. you can see the choke up right there. When I when I hit, it, I was like, oh, I got that one. That one, I thought I, I thought it might go third deck, and then I remembered I'm not that strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bomb, man. Oh, another great angle here. And so, really, if we if we think about it, you know, we always talk about adjustments on this show. You got to O2. You got beat a few times, and your main adjustment there was let's set my sights a little bit more to right field. I'm gonna choke up to give me some more bat control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then get, that happens. Get the foot down. Like I know a lot, there's a lot of people that hate hearing get the foot down. They would rather hear get up. And like I said, I go through phases where it's both. Like there's times. Sometimes I feel like if I think get it up too early, I get up too early, and then I sit there, and then I I have a tough time like hanging on to it so i end up falling and uh but then there's times where i'm in sequence and it's working and so i ride i ride that feeling or that thought process out and then if it doesn't work i go okay i'm gonna try to think get my foot down and it ends up cleaning my leg kick up and making it like up down like it should be and but then there's times when i think get it down and i end up getting it <laughs> and going forward so it's kind of like i go back and forth with those thoughts like whatever's working and whatever whatever feels right at that time um and other stuff like like you said the adjustments you got to make during the at bat like pitch to pitch like learning from each pitch each at bat like how to how to move on how to 
move on from failure and uh, get to the next pitch. That's a that's a big thing. You got a short memory in this game. Yeah, for sure, you can't hold on. You like I just try to, I just try to like understand, learn what I did, and move on from it. Go to the next pitch, and I know if I have an O for game, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to play tomorrow, so I'll be back in there. I got more bats. If you go go in slumps, you just think, all right, I got still got 400 more bats left. I can still I can still do this thing. Like, you know, so that's that. If I get out my first at bat, I'm like, I still got three more bats today. Like. You know, so that's that's mentally that's where I try to keep keep my mind at, always trying to stay positive and and learning, but move on from it as quick as you can. I mean, there's no denying, and forever you can say this: that's an all star, a MLB all star mentality right there. And I think that is it. Really, is what you have to do to be successful as a hitter because of how much failure we do go through, even the all stars. Mm-hmm. You know, the best hitters in the world, they're gonna fail more than they succeed. And you got to have that mindset. And there's times where you feel terrible during the season and you just have to go up there and battle. Like <laughs> You can't let anyone know that you feel terrible. Like you don't want the pitcher to know because as soon as they know, they got you. But, you know, if, even if you feel terrible, you got to go up there and battle, learn from each pitch, and like you said, move on from the failure. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, giving us three at-bats. Three. I think there's a ton of great nuggets in these, in these uh, videos that we're sharing. And um, everybody go check out David Dahl on his Instagram and his Twitter. He's putting out drills yeah. uh, for young guys to check out and see what he does. And putting something one. together today, hopefully post later in the week or something, and hopefully it turns out well. But it, it's, it's stuff that I do that I feel like has helped me. It um, might not help everyone, but hopefully it can help someone. <laughs> I love it. What's the what's the handle? So we'll we'll put it up too. Our handle is ddoll twenty one. I know I'm, I'm number twenty six, but I created this handle a long time ago and I <laughs> changed it. So ddoll twenty one. All right, man. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me.